This is New Tone at FL Studio. This is FL Studio's manual auto tune plugin. And although it seems complicated and daunting, it is actually a very simple plugin. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly how to do it. Whether you want to tune your vocals in a way that sounds invisible and just makes it sound like you can sing, or if you want to do the whole T-Pain thing. And this video is a clip from a longer video called the ABCs of FL Studio, which you can find in the description of this video. So I'm going to exit this out and because there are a couple of different ways you can load files. Let's say you have a beautifully recorded vocal like this one. I try to make myself believe. And you want to tune it. You can double click the sample and then go here to where it says audio clip, right click it and go to edit in pitch corrector and boom there you go now it's gonna put new tone onto the master mix channel whenever you do that so that's one way you can do it another way is if you double click the sample again go to the drop down arrow and go to detached you can open new tone in whatever mixer track you want to open it up in and then you can just drag it in. I try to make myself believe. Or if you want to just drag in from your browser, you can just throw it in. So now that we have the vocal in here, these three knobs at the top right are basically your macros for the entire vocal. The center is just how close to on pitch it's going to be. So you see how they move? If you bring center all the way up, it will make sure that everything is perfectly in pitch. Variation is basically the amount of T-Pain. Less variation, more T-Pain. More variation, it gets kind of cuckoo. I'll give you an example. No variation, it just sounds like this. I try to make myself believe. And then a lot of variation. I try to make myself believe. And then beside variation, we have trans. This knob is going to determine how sharply the pitch is changing from note to note. Let's zoom in and also have variation down all the way so you can see this very clearly. And we'll turn up center all the way also. Now, when I bring this trans knob up, just pay attention to this curve right here. If you have it all the way down, it's going to be very sharp, very T-Pain like. And if you have it down, it's going to make it kind of glide into the next note. And these lines that you see in the audio sample, these uh, orange lines are a representation of pitch. So you see when variation is high, uh, take a look at this, this note in particular. When variation is high, the pitch is very shaky. See, it's going from B up to D sharp down to A, and it's all over the place. With no variation, it's just staying on the note that you want it at, which is B. So that's pretty much all you need to know for the big things with auto-tuning in FL Studio with Newton. If you want to get a little more granular, you can double-click any one of these notes, and you can change a lot of things. Um, and this, this part really confused me when I first used it, so I'm going to break it down extremely simply so you don't have to live through the horror I did of trying to understand this. So these orange arrows, there you have one orange arrow at the top, one orange arrow at the bottom. The top one is for volume, the bottom one is for variation. So I'll turn this up so you can see it. Because if you have variation down all the way at the top, uh, this moving the variation here really isn't gonna do anything. Let's just put variation to the middle, and then when you come here, you can click and go down to increase the variation, or click and go up to decrease it. But then if you keep going up, it'll increase variation, but in the opposite direction. So this is for if there's some notes that you want to be like perfectly tuned, and then there's some notes that you want to have a little bit of a natural flavor to it. So bottom orange arrow is variation. Top orange arrow is volume. You just move this up and down, and you can see it just changes the volume. And that part's pretty simple. Now that we've got volume and variation down, these green and red things on the sides also control volume and variation. So at the top, this controls volume fade in and volume fade out. And at the bottom, this controls variation fade out and variation fade in. So moving this up or down is gonna determine the fade in gain. And moving it side to side 
is going to determine the length of the fade in. So let's say that you wanted to have the volume fade in all the way over here and I'll turn it down so you can really see what it's doing. I pretty much never use that, but in case you need to use it, it is there. Now at the bottom, we have the variation. You see as I drag it forward, whatever variation amount you have here, it's going to ramp the pitch in. And then this determines how long it'll take to ramp up to the pitch. And then same thing on going out and you can do the fade out volume the same way. And now we have this side to side arrow on the left side. This is basically whenever you want to move the note over and pay attention to this note right here. Whenever I move this to the side, you see it made that shorter. And when I move this back, it goes back to normal. This is helpful for whenever you're trying to get vocals to be on time and to be on the grid. And if you sung it in the wrong rhythm or something and you need to fix it, that's a quick way to do it. And now if you click in the center of the note, this is just going to change it. The last thing that you can do microscopically is this formant shift that is these up and down red and green arrows on the side in the middle. Whenever you go up, the formant gets higher and basically what this is doing is creating sort of like a chipmunk thing. You can think of the formant as like throat size. So the higher you go up, the smaller the throat size, which makes it sound like more high pitched and the lower you go down, the larger the throat size. Now you think of like a big man. Let's take this down to big man town. It sounds like monstery, but if you go up, it sounds like a little chipmunk. The other thing that's cool about this is that if you press control, if you hold down control while you're clicking, you can select multiple things or multiple notes and you can change. <laughs> the note position of all of those. You can also change all their formats at the same time. I'm going to make myself believe. Let's say that you're trying to tune this to an instrumental. I'm just gonna bring in a loop, for example, to be used as our instrumental. So I'm just gonna drag in this melody loop. If you want to hear your vocal over the instrumental, um, you'll notice if you press play in the playlist, Nothing happens. You press play in new tone. Now you just got the vocal, but no instrumental. How do you get them together? Well, I'm going to show you how. This little doohickey right here that looks like the Thug Life glasses. You can see in the top left corner of FL Studio in the hint bar, it shows slave playback to host. What this is going to do is this is going to make it so that every time you press play in the playlist, what you have in new tone is also going to play. So it's very important to make sure your vocals are lined up first before you bring it into new tone. And it's starting from the very beginning or it won't line up. So I'm gonna click this button, slave playback to host, and then we press play in the playlist. I'm going to make myself believe. And then there you go. And then once you have your vocal nice and tuned, you can either drag selection which you click that and then you can just drag it into the playlist or you can just send to playlist and it'll just send it straight to the playlist. And that's how you use new tone. If you want to learn more about FL studio, check out the video in the description called the ABCs of FL studio, where I show you everything from A to Z in FL studio. Have a nice day.